hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, on our Wednesday episode, we took a look at image representation, how we can actually take a picture and convert it to a representation that can be stored on a disk, which only holds bits and bytes. That was a very generic, you know, intuitive idea of how pictures actually work. Today, we'll jump from that to how things actually work in the real world by comparing five different image file formats. So let's jump in straight away. First and foremost is the bitmap file format, normally seen with the .bmp file extension. This basically works very closely to how we've actually understood things in the previous episode. Basically, we just take pixels and store them. And what this means, of course, is that the file size could be quite big. And while compression methods are used, only lossless compression methods work with the bitmap file format. So the ideal use case for the bitmap file format is any time in which you need a very clear representation. Usually this happens, say, when you're writing a program that you know, encodes a picture. Using a simpler file format like bitmap can make things easier for you. Next, we move on to PNG, also known as Portable Network Graphics. This is quite a common file format and it actually works quite similarly to bitmaps. Again, what we are representing on disk are indeed pixels and they can be compressed as well using lossless compression methods. One very important advantage of PNG files is in the fact that it can actually store transparency information. And this transparency isn't quite an on-off thing. What this means is you can actually have a pixel that has a color and is also semi-transparent to a certain degree. This being its key advantage means that any point of time in which you need an image that has transparency, PNG is a file format you can consider. And thanks to the fact that it uses lossless compression, this file format is also great for encoding things like text and logos because, well, there won't be any artifacts at all. Of course, the downsides of doing things this way is the slightly larger file size. Let's move on again to the GIF, also known as the Graphics Interchange Format. Now, you know about this, basically GIFs allow you to have animation within an image itself and has been a staple of the internet for a very long time. Nowadays, GIFs are actually sort of being overtaken by HTML5 video. You know, you can now embed tiny little WebMs or MP4 files, but in and of itself, GIFs can still be quite useful if you want just a tiny element that animates. GIFs actually work with index color and well, every pixel is one byte. This leads us to one huge disadvantage of using GIFs as a file format, and that is the fact that you can never have more than 255 colors in a single GIF. That could explain why GIFs have a certain look to them, and that comes about from the fact that there really aren't that many colors, so things don't look so smooth. GIFs can only be compressed losslessly, and what that means is, well, file sizes can get quite large as well. Add animation onto this, and you could be looking at very huge images. So yeah, generally, GIFs tend to not be very useful when you want to have a very large animated image. However, one advantage that arises out of this is that you can assign any one color to represent transparency. And what this means is yes, GIFs do actually support transparency as well, but this is a one-bit transparency. Pixels are either completely transparent or completely opaque. There is no in-between. Of course, this doesn't mean that GIFs are completely useless, one good use case for a GIF is when you are working with a very small animated element and you want to ensure that you know, it is highly compatible because of course, you can expect any browser to be able to display a GIF. However, when it comes to HTML5 video, well, it's not quite as widely supported. Let's move on once again to the JPEG file, which is, well, the most ubiquitous file format out there. JPEG actually stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group and yeah, that's the name of the people who've actually come up with this standard. As mentioned, JPEG files are really interesting because they don't store pixels on this. Instead, they convert everything into a frequency domain representation. Basically, the picture gets cut up into little blocks and each block is represented as a set of frequencies that go through a stage in which you can actually throw away some of the higher frequencies, some of the things you cannot see. What this means is this is a lossy compression method and that's why JPEG produces very low file sizes, despite the fact that images can still be of very high quality. And that is basically the key advantage of the JPEG file format. It 
basically gives you really good compression. Of course, one drawback of the lossy compression is the fact that if you try to compress text or logos or any form of line art, expect to see some artifacts. Things will not look, you know, crisp and perfect. JPEGs are the best for encoding pictures. If you want to encode anything else, you know, that it's like line art or things like that, PNGs may be the better choice. Finally, let's take a look at a cool one, a very different one, which is SVG. Standing for Scalable Vector Graphics, it is basically a completely different approach to representing an image because, well, instead of having pixels, there is completely no notion of that. Instead, every line, every shape is actually represented as equations. They are represented in their mathematical form. And one huge advantage of doing things this way is that you can actually scale the image to any size and still have the lines appearing very crisp because they are basically rendered on the fly. Also, since everything is just thought as a bunch of numbers, you can expect very high compression. However, one huge disadvantage of this is basically you cannot represent any kind of image using this method. Instead, everything has to be converted to line art before they can be represented this way because, well, a generic image cannot be represented as a bunch of equations. So yeah, despite its huge advantages, there are also some glaring disadvantages of this. And I would say one good use case is when you're representing things like, again, logos and text, because those can be easily represented in their numerical forms. So yeah, that has been a very fast rundown of, you know, five popular image file formats. That's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.